I'm Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant self Love, Narcissism Revisited. The territory that today comprises the State of Israel and Palestine has not been the first or exclusive choice of the Zionist movement. Theodore Herzl, the visionary who founded Zionism, was an assimilated Jew who did not consider Palestine the optimal choice for a resurgent Jewish nationalism. When the British offered Herzl a homeland in East Africa, today's Uganda, he accepted, and he proposed it to the Sixth Zionist Congress in Basel in 1903. After bitter recriminations, the Congress decided, 295 for, 178 against, to send an investigatory commission to the territory of Uganda to inspect it and report back. Herzl vowed that the Uganda scheme is not a substitute for the reclamation of Palestine as the historic homeland of the Jewish people, but his actions defied his speech. He pursued the British proposal to his death in 1904, as did many other prominent Jewish and Zionist leaders. They all organized themselves in the Jewish Territorialist Organization, ITO. The plan was decisively abandoned only after the Balfour Declaration, which granted the Jewish people a homeland in Palestine under the British Mandate. The declaration was issued in 1917, 14 years after the Uganda scheme. Yet in the meantime, other territorial plans emerged. The Zionists considered Canada, Australia, Iraq, Libya, and even Angola. Close to 10,000 Jews settled in Texas. Stalin created a Jewish homeland in Biobijan. Even the Nazis tried to revive some of these solutions to the Jewish question, notably in Lublin, Poland, and in the island of Madagascar. Palestine came a distant 20th or 30th in the list of priorities of the Jewish people. But it was to be that the State of Israel was created in the historic homeland of the Jewish people after all.